Okay. Okay. Should have plus should plus have plus then plus verb free. Be so careful about this formula because it's crucially important and most of the time it's it's usually spoken in English language. Should have been verb free. Does anyone know how to use it or how to formulate it? Can anybody give me an example? Does anybody know? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like uh, when you warn something, uh, when you warn uh, someone, you should have been aware of uh, something. Mm -hmm. It's something related to the past or the present? Uh, it's to the past. Uh -huh. Wishing the opposite, right? Yeah. For example, imagine that somebody didn't invite you and you want to blame her. What could you say? Uh, you should have been, you should have invited me. Uh, you should have invited me. Uh, so I think no, no need for Ben there here. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. So you should have invited me. You should have invited me. So for example, as I said, uh, for example, if you want to uh, say something to someone about something that is related to the past. Uh, for example, you, you, you for example, I want to say, Miss Puthena, you, you failed your exam. Imagine you failed your exam. So, mm -hmm. and I, I, I tell you, oh, you should have studied. <laughs> yep. You should have mm -hmm. studied. So that's, I think it's easy. Now uh, let's move to here and uh, let's check uh, the, the rest of the uh, homework. Uh, number four, Ms. Buthena, it's a noun, not having enough of something. Uh, I lack. Lack, very good. And for number five, I want you, Ms. Sebir, to think of it. Uh, Noun, a person who you invite to your house. A guest. Guest. Okay, now also you, Ms. Sebir. A noun, a person who receives a visitor. A uh, host. Host. Finally, I want Ms. Puthena to check this number seven. It's a verb. Send an email or message you receive to another person. Uh, forward it. Forward it. Very good. Or forward. To forward your message. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We're going to stop here right here and we're gonna go to the book I sent uh, to you okay and uh, by the way we're gonna actually uh, like every maybe not not every uh, class but I'm gonna actually give you like twice a week twice a week uh, dealing with writing and also I have actually will send you inshallah a book uh, to increase your vocabulary okay and I think it's great so as soon as uh, by the way there is a library in school and, and I took my students to the library and I have seen many good books uh, and I was checking the title. So I took a screenshot of one book. I'm gonna download it and uh, send it to you. So for that, we're gonna actually uh, deal with this book. As, as soon as you open the book, you go to page uh, four, uh, I think unit one, page four. Okay, and uh, this page, it's about a paragraph, how to write a paragraph. I think every one of you know how, uh, each one of you knows how to write a paragraph. But uh, my mission is to add more information about how to write academically speaking. And it's really important for IELTS, TOEFL, or any degree you wanna get, any degree you wanna get in the future, whether it is a diploma or whether it's related to your future endeavors uh, related, related to English. So what is a paragraph? A paragraph, as you know, it's a collection of sentences that describe, discuss, or explain one central idea. So any paragraph should or must have a central idea that revolves about. Uh, as you know that each paragraph, have, uh, each paragraph has three main parts. The topic sentence, the topic sentence, the supporting detail sentences, and the concluding sentence. Now, what is a topic sentence? You may wonder. I want Ms. Sabil to read a topic sentence. Uh, a topic sentence tells uh, the readers the main idea or thought that uh, the writer is trying to express. It is a one sentence summary of the entire paragraph. Each sentence that follows helps to develop the idea uh, presented uh, in the topic sentence. 
Very good. Mr. Sabir and Ms. Buthena, be careful when you write a paragraph. You should start each paragraph with a topic sentence, which is that, okay, what is the main idea of that paragraph, right? And then you support your topic sentence with details. And the details are maybe examples, uh, for example, statistics, facts, whatever you want. So, and as you know, the organization of a paragraph is based on the topic sentence. So now you might you may wonder also what are the elements of a topic sentence and as you know like this is really important the two main elements of a topic sentence are the main subject and a controlling idea be careful this is very important because we're going to discuss it in short the main subject and a controlling idea uh, does anybody know what is a controlling idea is i think you know the main subject but what is a controlling idea? Does anybody know? Uh, it's uh, like uh, a main idea for the topic. No, uh, because the main idea of the topic is included in the main subject. But what is a controlling idea here? Don't worry, because I'm going to explain it soon. But I was checking if you know uh, some information about it. So if you go down, I want from Ms. Buthena to read uh, this part, and then we're going to have some examples. Mm -hmm. A topic sentence contains the main subject of the paragraph and controlling idea. Uh, the controlling idea um, is, is three. Uh, the main topic uh, in the direction that the uh, writer wants to take it. Uh, uh -huh. Very good. So that is actually the definition of the controlling idea that stirs the main topic. It's like when you are driving, for example, uh -huh. it takes you to the right or to the left. For example, imagine, imagine, uh, imagine, you know, like uh, the wheel uh, is like your main topic. And the controlling idea is when, when you decide to want, want to go, where, want, what, where do you want to go? To the uh -huh. right or to the left or forward or backwards? For example, if you read this example, which is a topic sentence, <clears throat> like it could be a topic sentence in, in, in one paragraph, computers can be used in many different situations. As you can see, the main subject is computers. The controlling idea is different situations situations where people use computers. This is how you actually take your main subject and control it. This is the controlling idea. That's what you wanna write about. And as you can see from this sentence, we know that the paragraph is going to discuss something about computers. So the main subject is computers, but what are you going to write about computers? Because if you know computers is a too general idea, right? Mm -hmm. so, and you wanna be specific. That's why you want to control your idea. Specifically speaking, it will explain how people use computers in different situations. That's how you control your paragraph. And that's how you can be specific. You don't want to write vaguely, you write vaguely, you know, no, no you want to be specific. Uh, topic sentence two. Also, it's very important if you, if you want to take computers as the main subject of your essay or your paragraph. Computers have changed enormously in the past 20 years. Also, the main subject is computers, but changed in the past 20 years is your controlling idea. And also, we have also topic sentence three. Different computers can appeal to different people. Do you understand? Now, this is how you control your main idea. And you take this in many, many examples. Uh, so, is it clear? Is this topic clear, Ms. Sabine, Ms. Buthena? Uh, yes. Very good. So take your time. Can you see here the, uh, and I think, is it like, can you see? <laughs> yeah. What I want from you to take your time. And the question is, I want you to select a good topic sentence. In each pair of sentences, each sentence has two pairs. Put a check mark next to the better sentence better topic sentence and be prepared to explain your choices you don't have only you won't have only to uh, choose but you have to explain you have five sentences each sentence has two pairs 
choose the best one. Go ahead. Have you finished? Yes. Okay. Have you finished, Ms. Buthena? Yep. Okay. Very good. Uh, Ms. Buthena, number one, A or B? Uh, uh, number one is, uh, 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 I think it's, uh, uh, it's uh, A. Very good. Can you read it? <laughs> Very good. Yes, it is. Uh, 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 bilingual uh, dictionaries can help uh, non-native uh, learners in two very important important ways. Where is the controlling idea? Um, controlling uh, 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 bilingual dictionaries. The bilingual dictionaries is the topic sentence. Yeah. 
but where is the controlling idea? You know, like where we wanna, where, where yeah. I know, uh, I mean, you wanna just. Hmm? Native learners in two very important ways. Can oh, help, very good. Yeah, can, can help uh -huh. non-native learners in two important ways. So, and this is how you're gonna write, you know, like you wanna write the two important ways. Very good. Okay. Number two, uh, get ready, Mr. Sidi. Uh, number two. I think it's uh, it's B. Very good. Can you read it? A person who is interviewing uh, for a job has to be there. Important uh, three important uh, things uh, during the interview. Very good. Where is the topic sentence? A person, a person who is interviewing for a job. And controlling idea is you know like do three important things. Do three important. Very good. And for number three, I want from Miss Uthena to do it and to read. Uh, and there are many theories about uh, who theories called, theories, theories uh, about who called uh, John F. Kennedy. Uh, it's a very good, very and, good. Uh, uh, many theories. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Number four, Miss uh, Sensibi. Uh, I think it's B. Mm -hmm. Is it? Nope. <laughs> um. So it's a exactly. This is how you know. For, this is how you begin your topic sentence, because really? the second one is specific, right? You know, smartphones use touch screen technology. It's only topic sentence. Oh. It is not. It, it doesn't doesn't have a controlling idea, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's why you need to have a controlling idea. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sebil. Finally, number five. Go ahead, Miss Buthena. Uh, it's uh, B. Uh, mm -hmm. There are. Uh... There New, are numerous, numerous, mm -hmm. numerous techniques that scientists use to discover the age of a fossil. Fossil of a fossil. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. So that's it for uh, this book. And uh, here, uh -huh. uh, we have uh, a very important uh, one here. <laughs> we need to read a few things here. And uh, we can actually, it's better than the book itself because it has uh, some uh, more academic words. Uh, okay, I want from Mrs. Sabir to read this paragraph, changing a tire on your car. Uh, there are many steps in changing a tire on your car. Before you get started, make sure uh, you have the following items, a jack, a lug nut uh, wrench, and a spare tire. First, use uh, the jack to elevate, elevate uh, the car off the ground. Mm -hmm. This may require some strength because cars are very heavy. Using the lug nut uh, wrench, remove all the lug uh, nuts uh, from uh, the wheel. Uh, then will probably be the most difficult step because some of the lug nuts may be stuck. After mm -hmm. you have taken off the lug nuts, remove the flat tire and replace it with your spare tire. Screw the lug, uh, the lug uh, nuts back into mm -hmm. uh, the wheel and make sure that they are tightly fa fastened. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, lower the car back down to the ground. Check one last time to make sure that the nuts are uh, as tight as possible. Uh, following these steps will have, mm -hmm. will have uh, you back on the road in no time. Very good. And as you can see here, there are some uh, words to help you and definitions as well. So yeah, you can check them. A jack, it's a tool that is used to raise the car in order to remove a tire. We call it a jack, a jack. And they are really important to be remembered. Uh, to screw means to twist, as you can see. And fastened means attached. And uh, thank you for reading this. So uh -huh. you have an activity here. Uh, number one. <laughs> I want you uh, to go, uh, I think if you downloaded the book, open it on your computer to be able to uh, hear a check. Uh, now I want you to put a check mark, okay, here in this activity, in paragraph one, activity two. And uh, this activity is you have to put a check mark next to the statement that tells the purpose of the paragraph. So take your time. You have four choices. A, B, C, D, and you have to tell me uh, which statement that tells the purpose of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. 
What do you think? I think it's uh, D. Mm -hmm. Well, let's check. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> it is D to show how to change a flat tire. Very good. And uh, that's very good. Now, uh, that's it for uh, today for this uh, book. And I think, was it helpful? Was it oh, helpful? Yes. Very good. So that's why this book try to have it and try to check it because, uh, of course, I will help you more to uh, move to activities and maybe to assign you homeworks with that. And really, it's really good also because it has also uh, grammatical uh, and uh, vocabulary lessons. Okay, so uh, now we go back to our book here. And uh, for the speaking part, if you remember, I told you about, about that yesterday. Do you remember? Mr. Sabil, do you remember I told you yesterday to prepare uh -huh. uh, something related to your culture, to Libya? Oh, yeah. And uh, I know that you are good at improvising. <laughs> I know that and you, you can improvise very well, even if you haven't prepared. And uh, I want you to talk about things which are considered to be good manners and things that are considered to be bad manners while receiving a guest in Libya. Um, uh, first thing that you shouldn't uh, point your feet at something when you uh, cross your feet one second. Uh, mm -hmm. This is very offensive. Uh, mm -hmm. The second thing, you shouldn't scold your children or hit them in front of anyone mm -hmm. because uh, they think uh, it's wrong, very wrong, uh, especially it's offensive to other people also. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, also you have to uh, be well uh, behaved and manner to uh, older people. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you have to respect them and, mm -hmm. and also older women, older uh, men. And um, mm -hmm. uh, what else? <laughs> That's <laughs> it, no difference. <laughs> okay, uh, one more thing I need to ask you. Uh, yes? did you. Did you consider uh, telling us about your short story? Like, um, you know, like, have you, have you been planning about telling us about the, the short story to share it with us or no? I'll, I'll, I'll try to. I didn't, uh, I didn't work on it yet, but I'm mm. trying to. I want to ask you a few questions if you are willing to answer and uh, if Ms. Puthena allows it. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, usually like, uh, do you include many characters in your short story or you, you mainly uh, concentrate on focusing on one character? I think many. Many. Okay, that's really good. So you like to include many characters. So it's not about one hero. It could be another hero or it could be another another one. Right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Usually, did you include a plot twist in your short story? Uh, well, as I told you, I read the, I wrote them a long time ago. So mm. I don't remember exactly what I have been uh, writing. While writing, I'm, I'm just asking you to, to know your writing style. Uh, do you write in first person narration, second person narration, or third person narration? Uh, no, I think in second person narration. Oh, where you actually address it to you. You address uh, us, you know, like you're talking to the reader. Mm -hmm. mm, that's really good. So you want to include the reader in, 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 the, in the action. Yes. Very good. Well done. Continue. You have a talent. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's move uh, to something else. What about you, Ms. Puthena? Because I told you you have to prepare the number three, but you went. You logged uh, out of, of uh, but. Uh... No, I didn't, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, suddenly uh, uh, the connection is uh, stopped and mm -hmm. I didn't leave actually. Ah, but uh -huh. I sh do you know about your homework? You know, like nope. you have to prepare number three? Nope, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> no problem with that. Okay, as you can see now, we have some uh, here, uh, uh, something we, not, we wanna actually uh, include here, uh, which is here, as I told you, I have to uh, actually uh, skip some pages of this book. And uh, maybe, you know, like to be able to focus more on academic uh, topics. Uh, like for example, the writing we had. So you, today you, you knew how to write a topic sentence and how to write a controlling idea 
also. That's gonna be your homework for, uh, for tomorrow. So tomorrow your homework is to choose a topic, okay? It could be anything about computers, about anything you want. And you need to write in a three paragraph form, okay? Three paragraph form. So like uh, introduction, two body paragraphs or three body paragraphs and a conclusion, okay? So it's a four, let's say one, two, three, four, five. It's a five body essay, okay? I will repeat. You yeah. have to, you have to prepare an essay, okay? Mm -hmm. Where you wanna pick a topic. It could be computers, but you need to be specific. Like what, what do you wanna write about? Uh, what do you wanna include in the introduction? So, and you need, you have to choose a good topic, okay? It could be any topic. You have to write a good introduction, explaining the topic, a good thesis statement, okay? That is within the introduction, within the introduction, thesis statement, within the introduction. And also you have to write three topic sentences to be included in three body paragraphs, okay? Finally, that means one, two, three, four, and finally you have to write the conclusion. Then I will check your writing style and check if you have mistakes, then we can actually uh, work on it. Okay, is it clear? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, uh, for uh, here, the topic is uh, about uh, famous cheating moments in sports. And I think, I think we discussed this, but if you remember, we discussed something related to past perfect. Do you remember? And uh, we dealt with it. So uh, here, I want you to read, uh, taking a shortcut, and I want from Miss Buthena to read it. Uh, talking a shortcut uh, um, on a taking yeah mm -hmm. taking a shortcut on 21st April 1980 uh, 23 uh, 23 years old Rosie uh, Ruth uh, was a uh, first woman to cross the uh, finish line at the uh, Boston Marathon. Mm -hmm. She finished the race in the third fastest time for the uh, for a female ru uh, runner. Mm -hmm. Two hours, 31 minutes, uh, 56 seconds. But mm -hmm. when the uh, organizers uh, congratulated the Rose after the race, mm -hmm. they were surprised because she wasn't sweating very much. Mm -hmm. Some, specter, some uh, spectators or, mm -hmm. uh, who were watching the race told them what had really happened. During the last half mile, Rose suddenly jumped out of the crowd and uh, sprinted to uh, the, uh, the finish line. The marathon organizer took Rose's uh, title away and <clears throat> awarded it to the real winner, uh, JQ, uh, Jacqueline uh, Gre uh, Grillo. Mm -hmm. It was later discovered that three months later, uh, earlier, uh, earlier, Rose had also cheated in the uh, New York Marathon, where she had taken the subway. Very bit. good, very good. No problem with that. You have a homework for tomorrow also, but enough of homework. You have only one homework, which is writing homework. I need to move to a speaking topic. Ready? Are you ready? Uh, sorry? Are you ready? I want to prepare you to a speaking topic. Okay. And, okay. Mr. Sebi, are you there? Uh, yes. Very good. Uh, do you remember the Oscar? Uh, Will, Will Smith? Um, and Chris Rock? Landing, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Wait the, just a sec. The voice is not here, mister. Okay. I'm trying to I'm, I will try to fix it. Uh, how about now? Hello? Yep. Hello. Okay. Do you remember the incident at, at the Oscars between, uh, between Will Smith and Chris Rock? Yeah. Okay, yeah. you remember it. Uh, I will tell you the incident, and I think you are aware of it, but I wanna tell you, uh, I wanna teach you how to begin narrating. 
uh, it is a big ceremony, the Oscars, which is a hosting ceremony presented by a host chosen by the Academy. To, it's, it's held every year, uh, I think in February, where actually they give the awards to many movies uh, in many categories, categories, and they the actually the ceremony takes like three hours, where the host uh, makes jokes to entertain the audience. Okay, that's the point of uh, hosting, also like giving awards. Chris Rock, <laughs> as you know, uh, gave a joke related to a GIJ joke. Okay, which is related to uh, an old movie where uh, where uh, you know the character is like hairless. Okay, and uh, Demi Moore, if you know her, uh, she is famous actress. And uh, Will Smith was attending the ceremony with his wife Jada, Jada Smith. And Jada Smith uh, was hairless because of a medical condition. Then later on, Chris Rock said something about uh, Jada's hair, like "We will see you in GIJ Part 2. And by the way, Jada left. Uh, sorry, Will Smith left. But when Will Smith looked at his wife, he saw her being embarrassed. After that, he decided to be a man. And he said he told uh, Chris Rock uh, and he went to Chris Rock and he slapped him in front of the audience, not only audience, but million of viewers in the world watching the ceremony. OK, are you following? Mm -hmm. OK, so later on, he went back and he didn't stop. He didn't stop Will Smith. He said. Uh, and I will actually <laughs> keep your uh, keep your whatever mouth out of your whatever keep keep your mouth my your my wife's name out of your mouth and he shouted it twice. Later then, Chris Rock felt uh, like a moment of pause and there's like okay I'm going to I'm going to like relax. So it was a GIJ joke. He you know. Now I want to ask Mr. Buthena. It got viral, as you know, and they made many memes about uh, the incident. And uh, later on, you know the story that uh, Ms. Uh, Will Smith was punished and he apologized to the audience, telling this like violence is not the correct way to deal with that. But I need I need your opinion on that topic, Ms. Buthena. Uh, um, my opinion is uh, uh, Will Smith is uh, he is uh, 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 a famous character. Uh, sorry. Uh, famous uh, actor mm -hmm. uh, so he must to be patient and he must uh, to deal with that uh, more wise than this mm -hmm. uh, he must uh, uh, speak with the uh, the presenter is the, the presenters uh, the, uh, the host yes mm -hmm. to uh, de describe uh, for him what he uh, say uh, what he said uh, mm -hmm. and uh, nicely more than what he did uh, mm -hmm. instead of slap of him. Um, you can't, uh, uh, usually you think that the actors are uh, uh, like angels and uh, wise and they kind. Uh, this is what we always uh, uh, saw them usually, mm -hmm. or uh, we have uh, take information about it. But uh, uh, I think it's uh, not uh, appropriate uh, I think he did it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Ms. Puthena. Thank you. I appreciate your opinion. Well done. What about you, Mr. Sabir? What is your opinion about that incident? I think uh, both were uh, kind of wrong, but uh, the one who was more uh, mistaken was Chris because he uh, used jokes to humiliate uh, people, and it's uh, very offensive. You shouldn't do that. Uh, and Will Smith, uh, you know, he acted like that, and it's wrong. But I think they was overreacting to what he did. Mm -hmm. In the end of it all, he uh, offended his wife. What uh, do people expect him to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think he was not uh, that wrong, but he was he was wrong at uh, the end of it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, you know, like many actually, I can't say you are wrong. I can't say that you are wrong because if I am married to someone and uh, and he is that person is dear to me, and but it's about, you know, like what, what Ms. Buthena said, Ms. Buthena actually said something really like essential here because she said like uh, Will Smith is a, is a lovable character, right? Everybody knows Will Smith because of his movies and he is an adorable character, funny, uh, you know, like I like Will Smith, 
and I love watching his movies. And imagining him slapping someone on the face out of whatever the reason is, even humiliating his wife. And, you know, like, uh, and that's what the point is. For example, I'm not defending Chris Rock here. For example, Chris Rock was humiliating also uh, the Amazon founder. Do you remember? Uh, what was his name? The one who actually, uh, the founder of Amazon, one of the richest man, men on earth. I forgot his name. And he made that joke about like, he got divorced and he's still rich. <laughs> Do you understand? He got divorced and he's still rich. I know I'm not comparing this joke to, to Chris Rock's jokes about Jada, but imagining your, your hero, your hero using uh, that slapping, you know, like, and then he, he goes back uh, saying a bad word in front of millions. Not only that, shouting, shouting, like keep your, do you understand? It was like, and some audience were like opening their eyes. Like, what's that? Of course, I justify, sometimes I justify Will Smith act because when I went back to the story and I saw how he deeply loved Jada, even though she cheated on him, it happens on, in Hollywood. And, but still he is a man, he thinks that I should be the man. And later on Jada said like, violence is not the, the right act. And uh, so that's why for me, it's a controversial topic. You know, controversial, the meaning of controversial. Because people, people, take, people take sides, especially in Hollywood, it is something ra rather controversial. And uh, it's, all about, it's all about showing off. It's not about, you know, like taking the decision to be a man, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Like uh, if you know that Muhammad Ali, do you know Muhammad Ali? Yep. Muhammad Ali once, uh, he was named Cassius Clay and he was like in a, in a fight with someone who didn't accept to call him Muhammad. Like he, he said like, why don't, you, why don't you tell me my real name? Why is that? And he, by the way, he didn't offend him by saying bad words about him. No, no, he just like, like we will see that in the ring. <laughs> he took that in the ring, like say my name, say my name, what's my name? So yes. It's, it's a matter of manhood here. It's, it's to be a man, to stand for who you are. Um, so I'm not defending Will Smith here and I'm not attacking him, criticizing him. I still love him. I still love him. I still admire him, but I don't admire uh, the slap. You know, do you understand? You know, like he could, he could have done, look, he could have done other, other ways to defend his wife. Yep. Mm -hmm. He could he could done he could have done other ways. So thank you very much for listening. And I guess uh, tomorrow you have like a work to do, which which is to write. Okay. So do you have any questions? No question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you please please sometimes I want you to ask. You know why? Because sometimes I feel I'm not doing that much with you. <laughs> I feel like um I want to do more. That's why I want to give you writing sessions. But if you have any suggestions uh, to help me out, I would welcome it, like, like deeply welcome it. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. What about you, Mr. Sabir? Um, uh, for me, I think we should do more uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, questions, more grammars, more. Uh, we should work on our skills in English. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for highlighting this point. And I will do that. I will do that. Uh, you know, in Ramadan, it's really, uh, you know, because we are having one hour, but I will do my best to stop giving you this book. That's why I decided, because sometimes I feel like, yeah, you need to work on more grammatical topics and uh, to, to, to test your skills. So I'm going to start with that uh, tomorrow, inshallah. And then after that, I want to get your feedback. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.